Welcome to this Chemscape presentation on exposure to diesel engine exhaust. Diesel engine exhaust is one of the most prevalent lung carcinogens. This presentation will discuss the health hazards of diesel engine exhaust and how you can reduce or eliminate exposure. Diesel exhaust is produced by the burning of diesel fuel. The exhaust is a mixture of gases, vapors, aerosols, and particulate substances. Diesel exhaust can sometimes be visible as a puff of black smoke when you see a diesel engine started or revved, but frequently these emissions are not visible. People who may be at risk include workplaces where diesel-powered vehicles are used, for example, locomotives, buses, trucks, and construction vehicles. Workspaces where diesel exhaust can accumulate, such as warehouses, ferries, ships, garages, loading zones, fire stations, mines, or places where diesel generators are used. Some occupations work in areas where exhaust levels are high or can accumulate, such as police officers, customs officers, drivers of diesel vehicles, airline ground crew, farm workers, dock workers, and miners. The quantity and composition of diesel engine exhaust emissions vary depending on the type of engine, the composition of the fuel, maintenance and tuning, the engine temperature, the workload, and even the outdoor temperature, as cold temperatures keep exhaust at ground level and in the worker's breathing zone. Inhalation is the most common route of exposure for diesel engine exhaust, breathing in air that contains the diesel particulate matter, the fine and ultrafine particles can avoid many of the human respiratory system's defense mechanisms and enter deeply into the lung. Workers who are in the area of exhaust from a diesel exhaust pipe may notice soot on their faces. Short-term exposure can cause coughing and irritation of the eyes, nose, throat, and respiratory tract, as well as a mild headache. Breathing in diesel exhaust can cause lung irritation and cause an allergic reaction causing asthma. It can also make pre-existing asthma worse. Diesel engine exhaust is classified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, as a group 1 carcinogen to humans. Repeated exposure to diesel exhaust can also lead to chronic bronchitis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and asthma. If you work in an area where you are exposed to diesel exhaust, see if a hazard assessment has been done or if any health concerns have been reported. Workplaces can reduce worker exposure to diesel exhaust. Let's review a few ideas. If you follow the hierarchy of controls, you can control emissions with elimination by simply turning off an engine or avoiding idling. Operating engines outdoors is another simple solution. An ideal solution is to consider substitution by replacing diesel-powered engines with electric or other types of power sources. Substituting diesel fuel with a cleaner fuel, for example, dimethyl ether, or alternative technology, for example, battery-operated vehicles. But sometimes these solutions are not always practical or possible. Maintaining engines and exhaust systems on a regular maintenance schedule can help with their efficiency and minimize emission. Maintain the body of the vehicle to make sure that exhaust is not leaking into the cab or passenger area. Use exhaust treatment systems, such as diesel particulate filters, catalysts and or converters, and implementing exhaust gas recirculation. The three most effective engineering controls to eliminate or reduce exposure to diesel exhaust are the use of engine exhaust filters, local tailpipe exhaust ventilation, dilution ventilation. Engine exhaust filters are designed to remove particulates from the exhaust stream. The filters are installed in the exhaust system or at the tailpipe. Local tailpipe exhaust ventilation works by attaching a hose to the tailpipe and connecting it to a fan, which discharges the exhaust outside the worksite. An advantage of the local tailpipe exhaust hose and ventilation is that it removes not only the diesel particulates, but also the gaseous emissions. Of course, it only works if you remember to attach the hose to the tailpipe. With dilution ventilation, the air contaminated with diesel engine exhaust emissions is exhausted to the outside, while fresh outside air flows into the garage through open doors or supply air openings. Air is exhausted using a roof or wall fan. 
In addition to the dilution and natural ventilation, local exhaust or extraction ventilation may be required at loading zones, maintenance, and repair shops to help remove generated diesel engine exhaust emissions from the employee's breathing zone and bring in a source of fresh air. Fresh air intakes should be located away from designated smoking areas and the areas where exhaust emissions are vented outside. Some other administrative controls we have not discussed include Reduce the hours of work exposed to exhaust through job rotation and scheduling. Modifying work, for example, by limit speeds and use one-way travel routes to minimize vehicle congestion. Prohibiting or restricting unnecessary idling of engines. Modify the operations, for example, restrict the amount of diesel-powered equipment or total engine horsepower operating in a given area. Ensure that the number of vehicles operating in an area does not exceed the capacity of the ventilation system. Modify the layout of the workplace, for example, by designating areas that are off-limits for diesel engine operation and or personnel travel. Leave garage doors and windows open if weather permits. In addition to engineering controls, good work practices may help reduce diesel engine exhaust emissions and hence worker exposures. Here are a few examples. Open the garage doors before starting vehicles. Keep garage doors open for at least 10 minutes following vehicle operation. Think of a retrofit program to rebuild diesel engines to generate less diesel particulates. And consider both mechanical performance and emission data when selecting new engines. When there is an airborne hazardous substance, a respiratory protective device should be worn. However, the respiratory protective device should only be used as a last resort after other controls have been considered and implemented. Awareness of chemical hazards you encounter at work and taking precautions to reduce your exposure is an important step to create a healthy and safe workplace for everyone.